been thinking a lot about wheelbarrows lately. And it's because of comments I got on a previous video where people talked about wheelbarrows. And it's not something I usually talk usually think about, but um so that video was about Africa and I said in the video that people in Central and West Africa did not have the wheel prior to modern times because uh because the tsetse fly would kill any draft animals that they would have brought in to pull their carts around. And, you know, so no, no draft animals to pull carts, therefore no carts, therefore no wheels. And uh, then some of the people in the comments were like, well, what about wheelbarrows? Couldn't people in Africa have used wheelbarrows? And uh, I think that's a really interesting question, actually, and it's one that's worth exploring. Um, but I thought also that it was interesting that they were asking it. Because some of them, I mean, some of the people asking about wheelbarrows were just like, it was just idle curiosity, and it was just something that popped up in their head, and they were wondering, you know, well, what about wheelbarrows? But some of them kind of doubled down on it, and they were like, wheelbarrows make so much more sense than carrying stuff around. Carrying stuff around on your head never makes sense when you have a wheelbarrow. And so if anyone is doing work carrying things around, they're obviously going to want to use a wheelbarrow, and if they don't have a wheelbarrow, they'll invent one. Um, so what's the deal with these Africans? They weren't inventing wheelbarrows. And I, I find that an interesting assumption that people would make. And I'm not prepared to answer the question why Africans did not have wheelbarrows uh, for reasons that I think will become apparent as we go along in the video. But I do want to talk about wheelbarrows because I, I find this a, a convenient entry point for thinking about the history of technology in general. I want to use thinking about wheelbarrows as a way of understanding the history of technology. First of all, let's consider where wheelbarrows existed. In antiquity, wheelbarrows were only used in one place, and that was China. Our earliest evidence for wheelbarrows in China dates to the Han Dynasty, which is about 2,000 years ago. It was not used anywhere else. The Indians, you know, no one in Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, nobody used wheelbarrows. And also ancient Rome. No one in ancient Rome used wheelbarrows. In Europe, wheelbarrows start to appear in our textual record around the year 1200. Roughly. We're not sure exactly. Because it's sometimes hard to interpret the evidence, actually. But sometime during the Central Middle Ages, it pops up in Europe. And so that, I think, you know, I, you know, when we're thinking about why weren't they using wheelbarrows in Africa, one thing that I think about is, well, gosh, it's just really hard to tell why people use wheelbarrows, like when they do and when they don't. Like, why is it the Chinese were using wheelbarrows and not Mesopotamians? Like, I don't even know the answer to that question. I don't know the answer to the question why the ancient Romans didn't use wheelbarrows. And there could be all sorts of reasons why ancient Romans did not adopt the wheelbarrow. And I'm not going to sit here and speculate about all those reasons. I'm, ju I'm just going to say, like, they didn't use them. So obviously there's a scenario where people who are perfectly smart and capable and are obviously constructing things and have a demand for manual labor and are, you know, do, you know doing all the things that you would think a wheelbarrow would be, would be suited for, and still they didn't use wheelbarrow. So this brings us to the first lesson that wheelbarrows teach us about the history of technology, which is that technologies are only obvious in hindsight. Uh, it might be obvious to us to use a wheelbarrow in a given situation, but that doesn't mean that it would be obvious to someone who had never thought of a wheelbarrow before. Even in a situation where all the ingredients for a wheelbarrow exists, if you consider like in medieval Europe, they had wheels, and axles, and they had hand barrows, which is kind of like a wheelbarrow, but the handles are on both ends. So it looks like a stretcher, and two workmen carry the load around with the thing between them. Uh, and, and a wheelbarrow is simply taking a hand barrow and removing the handles on one end and attaching a wheel and axle. And now you have a wheelbarrow. So at any time during the early Middle Ages, Somebody in Europe could have thought up, oh, why don't I just attach a wheel to one end of this hand barrow? And no one did. 
not until at, at the minimum the 12th century. Now, I want to qualify what I just said, because in modern times, I think it's a little bit different. In our modern culture, we think about technology all the time. We think about what's the new model of iPhone coming out or the new car model and what features does the new car have? And cars have features now that they didn't have 10 years ago. And we think about like tech, you know, tech news and there's AI in the news all the time. And our biggest, most prestigious corporations are tech companies and there's tech, tech, tech all the time. And we're always thinking about technological, new technological things coming out. And so for us, it might be that we would, and I think arguably this is the case, that we anticipate new technologies before they come along because we can see where the trend lines are going. Um, but that's not true of the Middle Ages or of antiquity because people in those eras did not see technology developing rapidly before their eyes. The way the world was in their childhood was pretty much, from a technological standpoint, pretty much identical to the way it was when they were in old age. And new technologies would come along from time to time. So certainly there were generations of farmers where they would become aware of some new farming technique or some new farming tool that would become available. But it wasn't such that they expected new innovations happening all the time. So uh, with that being the case, there was a mindset that the world is a static state world from the standpoint of technology, that the lifestyle, the quality of life, the standard of living of a farmer, as far as they were concerned, was the way of life of farmers back, going back all the way to the very beginning and would be the way of life of people all the way to the end of time. And given that expectation about the world, it would not occur to them to think about what new innovations they might come up with, what new technologies they might try to invent. Now, there were people in the Middle Ages that did think about technologies and did take an interest in those sorts of things, but they were the rare exception. All right, so that's the first point. Second point is, uh, I mentioned that China had the wheelbarrow first. Wheelbarrow was in China for a thousand years, then it popped up in Europe. Now, when it popped up in Europe, was that because the idea for the wheelbarrow had been introduced from China? Or was it invented independently in Europe? Either of those is possible. There was contact between Europe and Asia, so they could have gotten the idea that way. On the other hand, cities were expanding in the 12th and 13th centuries in Europe, especially the 13th century. And there was, you know, construction happening and stuff. So it could have been a spontaneous local thing. We also don't know if it was invented once in Europe or several times. You know, there are different styles of wheelbarrow popping up more or less around the same time in the 13th century. Does that mean there were multiple different inventions by different people? We just don't know. And this gets us to our second point, which is that it's really hard to trace the origins of a technology. And at least in the Middle Ages and in antiquity, now, you know, modern times is easier because people have to file patents and there's just in general lots and lots of writing happening. But in the Middle Ages, craftsmen did not write things down, typically. Uh, there were people who could read and write, but they they were only in certain professions. It was if you were if you worked in the church, if you studied theology, or if you worked in medicine or in the law, then you would know how to read and also write, but mainly to read because you had to be able to read ancient texts. Those professions were based on reading ancient texts. And so reading was necessary. It was not necessary in order to pursue a career as a farmer or as a uh, leather tanner, a carpenter, a, a stonemason, any of those things, a cartwright, any of those professions, you did not need to be able to read to do those professions. And typically people who do those professions were illiterate. It's not like today where everyone reads all the time and everyone's forced to learn how to read whether they want to or not. And we're surrounded by the necessity of reading because we've got the internet and we have to fill out government forms all the time. All the time. I make it sound like government forms are... <laughs> but you know what I mean. But government forms 
were not really a thing. I, I mean, they did exist, but in a much, much smaller scale, and most people didn't have to fill them out. Um, you know, no one was going to the DMV in the Middle Ages. So literacy was not a thing, was not, was not kind of this like obligatory thing like it is now. And therefore, when you're pursuing your craft as a carpenter or a cartwright, it would not occur to you to write down, hey, I wrote, I made a wheelbarrow for the first time ever, or, you know, whatever. I, I heard about this wheelbarrow, this fancy new idea from this traveler from China. Like, people didn't write that kind of thing down. And so we never know when an invention was invented. If you, if you read about the history of technology in the Middle Ages, if you try to find out what's the origin of this particular technology, it will always say, I don't know, always, maybe I shouldn't say that categorically, but typically it'll say, we don't know the origins exactly. You know, we don't know precisely when this invention appeared. It first occurs in the written record in this year, but that could mean anything. It could mean that it could mean that people had been using it for 50 years before some priest decided to write down about it and in passing, or some artist decided to depict it in in an illustration. Uh, but there were no patents and no one was writing down specifically, here's what the craftsmen are doing. That was not usually a thing that literate people took an interest in writing about. They wrote about political events. They wrote about churchy type stuff, religious stuff. Um, I'm speaking, of course, in particular about Europe. Um, but they didn't write about what the Cartwrights were doing. All right, so for the third point, I want to show you some pictures. Here are some pictures of workers in the late Middle Ages building stuff. And you'll notice that they're carrying loads on their backs or they're using hand barrows, but they're not using wheelbarrows. Even though this was a time period in which wheelbarrows existed in Europe. Now here are some depictions of women in more recent times during the 18th and 19th centuries carrying loads on their heads. Now these are European women and they're all holding baskets on their heads. I don't know if holding is the right word in this context, but they've got baskets on their heads with various things in the baskets like food, laundry, a baby, all sorts of things in these baskets and they're carrying them on their heads. Now we in North America think of head porterage, which is what this is called or head carrying as something that's done in faraway exotic lands, like, you know, indigenous women in South America or women in Africa or women in India, they carry stuff around on their heads. We don't usually think of white women carrying stuff around on their heads. Nevertheless, that was what white women used to do up until the 19th century and in some parts of Europe until the 20th century. So this is not just something that's an exotic thing that strange brown people do. This is something that it's universal. Women all over the world used to do this. It stopped in recent times uh, in the West because of modern technology, but it was a perfectly normal thing back then. And again, I want to point out, these women were carrying loads on their heads when wheelbarrows existed in Europe. So it's not an obvious thing to say, well, women in Africa were carrying stuff around on their heads because wheelbarrows weren't there. If they had had wheelbarrows, they would have put their loads in the wheelbarrows and moved them around. It's not as simple as that because we have evidence. It's not even evidence, it's proof. We've got so much proof that women in Europe were doing the same thing when they had wheelbarrows around. So it's, it's not as simple as saying a wheelbarrow is always a labor-saving device. It's always in, uh, an improvement over carrying stuff around with your body. It's always a better option. We can't say that categorically. So here's the third lesson. Technologies have context. We could say in a sort of ethereal, abstract way that one technology is better than another technology or more advanced than another technology. But those judgments don't mean anything in practicality because whether a technology is better or worse has to do with whether it's more useful or not. And what makes a technology useful has a lot of variables involved. There are economic factors that uh, in play. There are 
uh, cultural factors, social factors that all play into whether one technology or another is more useful or one technique for solving a problem, one approach to solving a problem is more advantageous or less advantageous than another one. So it's not enough to simply look at a, a case scenario where they're not using a wheel or they're not using a wheelbarrow and say that's definitely a less optimal situation. But this could, of course, raise an interesting question. Why were European women carrying stuff on their heads when they could have been using wheelbarrows? What was going on? But in order to answer that question, we would have to have a lot of background information about the context. What was the actual labor that women did? What was their daily routine? And would a wheelbarrow have fit into that? Was it a scenario where women are just constantly going in and out of doors? Uh, they're picking up and putting down loads very often. Uh, they have to have their hands free to grab stuff and they can't use a wheelbarrow. Like what, like what were women doing in their day-to-day -day work, we have to consider that. We have to consider all those factors before we can evaluate why a given technology wasn't implemented in that, in that case. Um, and, and so th that's true if we're trying to understand European women and why they were doing head carrying. And likewise, that's also true if we're looking at Africa and we're wondering why were Africans carrying stuff on their heads? We can't just jump to a conclusion right away and say it must have been X. It must have been Y. You know, I know the answer, blah, blah, blah. You have to do a deep dive into what, what is the culture of that area? What are the economic factors at play? What is the daily life of, of a woman or of a, a male, you know, constructing a building, for example? You know, what is their daily life? What is the actual process of their labor? And would a wheelbarrow have fit into that? You have to know all those things before you can answer the question, why were they not using a wheelbarrow? And that's why I'm not prepared to answer that question in this video. I'm not prepared to say why Africa didn't have the wheelbarrow. I can't answer that question. So I'm just going to leave it out there. I'm going to leave it on the table. I'm like, you know, and if anybody else wants to explore that and try to figure that out, that's fine with me. I, I can't do it. So let me know what you think. And... Thanks for watching.